flags. But mm -hmm. I I'm ready. Six thirty. Okay, it is six thirty. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the regular meeting of the Arlington City Council, uh, May fourth, six thirty. And uh, welcome you all here. And at this time, would you please join me in the pledge of allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America. the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we will have roll call. Council Member Onrein. Here. Council Member Badger. Here. Council Member Morgan. Here. Council Member Haddleston. Here. Council Member Gilman. Here. Thank you. Also at the table with us this evening, City Administrator Amy Newsom on my left. And uh, on by audio is uh, City Attorney Ross Arnest. Um, and again, if you haven't signed in, please do so. Okay, at this time, I would entertain any changes or additions to the agenda. I have three additions. Okay. The Sibley East Senior Parade. That will come under the number. They will adjust it under the council, but they're asking that we take action on it this evening, so it would right. come under new business. New business there. Right. I have the addition of Jane Romaker as a full-time city employee at seventeen dollars per hour plus benefits. That would be under new, new business. business and number twenty under new business. Uh, Michael Kudrowski wage change to twenty-one dollars an hour plus change in his job description to work on the community center. And I have one more addition, actually I have four. I have one under the consent agenda to accept the resignation of Lexi Stock from the Arlington Public Library and post for the position. That you propose under the consent, consent agenda. agenda. That would be F. Okay, any other changes? Hearing none, a motion is in order to approve the agenda as amended. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Motion by Council Member Amrain, second by Council Member Hallstead to approve the consent, consent or to approve the agenda as amended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carried. Move into the consent agenda. Um, item four is the consent agenda and uh, consists of the following items approval of the bills. Item B approval or of the April 9th, 2020 EGI wastewater minutes. Item C, approval of April 20th, 2020 city council minutes. Item D, April 29th, 2020 special city council minutes. Item E, accept resignation of Tony Voigt from the Arlington Fire Department effective April 30th, 2020. And then lastly, item F, resigna approved resignation of uh, Lexi Stock from the uh, Arlington Library. Effective June 1. Effective June 1. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Council Member Betcher, second by Council Member Hamilton to approve the consent agenda as read. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carried. All right, moving on to the addressing the council. Um, I believe there's someone representing uh, the group that is planning a, uh, would like to plan a parade for the graduation. Would you please uh, come forward and 
present your ideas. Just come up here and set the table. Okay. <laughs> so I guess what uh, what we kind of like to do is we like to have a parade honoring the seniors for the seniors graduating. Um, I've talked with uh, Mr. Harder about it a little bit this morning today, and they're going to be possibly doing a virtual ceremony or possibly a live ceremony, depending on Governor Waltz and what's going on. We'd like to independently, after one of those things, have a parade basically for the for the kids where we have a, maybe anywhere from five to ten floats, which basically be trucks, those trailers, and then do, uh, uh, they, just, they have to keep the six foot distance from the bales to take out the trailers, the reason we have bales to sit on, and then just uh, another parade route. Mm -hmm. Everyone should have received yeah. this that's today. Just, that's just something that we kind of came up with from the idea. To uh, have a long enough route so that plenty of people could see it, but not. So we have, so we can keep the social distancing and respect for the safety of everybody. And then uh, it would start at the, at the ballpark and follow the route and then the ball. So we need a little bit of help with traffic control, possibly. With, and I did speak with Chief Patterson. It looks like he left. He was fine with it. Yeah, I noticed too you're staying clear of any highway. Yeah, okay. Highway which is yeah. Good. 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 I think it was simple. Just something, something for the kids. So that, you know, they've done a lot of virtual stuff already, and if, if they come to a virtual ceremony, besides, it'd be nice to have something where they can at least parade through and, and people can get some pictures of them. Mm -hmm. We'd like to maybe if we can get the you know, fire department involved with our Randy Lord or King Arnold, see if those kids are going to sure. be Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, typically I don't ask the council to ask questions, but if they're being you're here now, and we will take this up for a decision later in the meeting. Is there any concerns or questions members of the council have at this time? We figure on, on one trailer, if we do one trailer, we can get roughly 16 kids on a 45 foot trailer. If we have a 25 foot trailer, we can probably get. So that's kind of what we're talking about doing. I think we've got enough other community support where we can get trailer and trucks that be a fairly, should be fairly simple. Not that huge. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you'll be going through some of the residential areas? Yeah, kind of. Well, as yeah, well. as it shows on you know, the map. And it kind of works well. So if it does go the virtual method, we could do the parade that way. Or if it goes where they can actually, um, and when I talked to Mr. Harder and Amstan about this, they have some ideas, but it's all, they're really not going to be able to do anything until they get the thing from the Minnesota Board of Education or yeah. until they get approval on that. So. Questions for the group? I have just one. Huh? What is your name? Brent Ryerson. Thank you. Okay, well, we have a new business, so we will be making a decision about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for putting that together. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wish to speak to the council at this time? Yes. Lisa Patrick, Hobel Arlington. I know you guys got my email, so I'll try to keep this part short. We'll get time to look at it and look at the timeline. Um, People wonder why I stay on this issue, and this is not me being against Northland wanting to get them shut down. The city has been so on everyone in the community about cleaning up property and safety and all these other issues. These items that we keep bringing up, they are safety issues, they are violation issues, and they are ordinance issues that are not continually followed through with Northland. When I sent that first email asking about that water pit, Amy and I took a picture of Amy Berger and I took a picture of that water pit and brought it up to the city last May, pictures and all, about the safety issue. What if a kid were to fall in there? Only a week later to find out about the dog that had fallen in there. Yes, the vet verified 
that dog drowned. I talked to the family, that poor dog, the pads on its feet, were completely scraped and shot from trying to scrape its way out of that water pit. So family lost their dog in that water pit that should have had a more permanent fence put up over a year ago. I did talk to the chief about it. He said he talked to Northland a few times about getting that fence put up. I have verification that Northland said they put a snow fence, a temporary fence up, but they would get something more permanent. There's documentation that every single thing that I have talked about and nothing gets followed through on. They still have all their junk sitting out, metal, crud. If it was my property, I would have already gotten the citation. So now we get into the citation issue. The police, their hands are tied. We've consistently been told, we don't even know who owns of Northland. Chief John and Tragedy of Northland tickets for the noise. Those got thrown out of court. Why'd they get thrown out of court? because the tickets were wrote out to Josh Hubble. Their attorney said, well, I'm, I'm not the majority shareholder. I'm not responsible for having this ticket or paying for it. So those tickets were thrown out. So I feel like the police have their hands tied, and that's part of the reason with the water pit that they never got a citation to take care of that or any of the other stuff. I, I'm just wondering, like what is going on that the building inspector is not following through on these inspections, allowed to keep these permits open, allowed to keep doing all this work. Nobody's following through on anything. And I don't know what's going on with the new dryer. I did, Michael didn't call me back today, um, but he did tell me on Thursday that they have not gotten a permit for the new big dryer they brought in. Whether or not that's even getting installed yet, who knows? I mean, it just seems like this is, this is a company that Nobody knows what's going on in there. They're just doing whatever and it's just being allowed to happen. And I'm wondering what's gonna have to happen to that stop. Luckily that little that little kid's dog, when it broke the leash and got off, luckily that little boy didn't follow that dog and fall in that fist. You guys would have a huge loss on your hands right now. The city and Northland, because all of that was verified through pictures and complaints on record at city council meetings and in police reports. I mean, it's time that you guys finally do something about all the crap that's going on down there to make sure that they're following all the rules and it's all being done legal, safe, everything. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Anyone else? Hi guys, from Burger, 124 Henderson Road. I'll just say pretty much ditto to what Lisa said. I've also been in contact with that family. Um, I was absolutely mortified that that happened, that we had to get to that point. We all, as city, city members, as police departments, councils, mayors, everyone, you guys were all notified of it. Please don't come back. Nothing was done. Um, the other things with Northland that um, I might, first of all, my neighbors can't be here tonight, so I'm speaking on behalf of myself, Kellerman's, and um, another, another thing from the Fishers. Um, the trailers we discussed last week, in the minutes, you guys, something in there about rezoning that, I thought we were all against that. Wondering why that was in the minutes, it was discussed after we were here. I don't plan on leaving city council meeting until we're done from this point on, because we guys are discussing things about something that we've discussed, we want to know about it. Um, residents of Henderson Road waited long enough for those trailers to be gone. Don't know where you guys are at today, I haven't seen the agenda to see if that's on there. Um, what do we do if uh, some of these tenants that are living there are in there and start coming in? Something in the minutes Lisa brought to me saying that there hasn't been anybody living there in the last couple of years? No, they've been there. Not as many, but there's been tenants there every single year. When I bought my house five years ago, I was sold five years maximum and that, that horrible mess would be gone. It was cleaned up. When they decided what bought it, it was nicely cleaned up and it's again atrocious. It's a mess. You know, like you all agreed, the noise is going to continue. Um, so that's pretty much the trailer thing. Uh, some ideas that were brought up through our little group on our block thought that a community garden would be a good place for that. Um, solar panels, we can maybe work on some of our electricity around here, that the city can maybe buy that back and put solar panels there. That wouldn't cause any issues with the noise from our plant. Um, um, and the other one that was brought up, um, Denise uh, Swanson had come to the city council uh, about a year ago asking for a dog park. Um, that's already three fourths fenced in, so that might not be a bad spot for a dog park also. And it wouldn't, the noise of Northland, it's smell of wouldn't, wouldn't bother us, us dog owners to be there for that. Um, 
where Norco is concerned, um, I have quite a few friends in the last two years that have got pictures of um, cars and campers parked on their grass. But you guys, as members of the city, employees at the police department go out with a camera, spend the money to take the pictures of the cars parked on yards, photocopy them in color, spend all that money, and find those residents if they didn't move them. You get more from them. I want to put them a picture today. That stuff's been there for over a year on the corner. The whole corner is all rusted and it's going into the ground, everything. And there's a lot of water sitting there. It's just an absolute eyesore. Um, the last thing, the sex offender I was contacted by um, the fishers this morning, um, the house has been um, sold. They saw him move out. Anybody know where he went? You guys aware that he moved? I just the saw the storage bed deal in front of his house here. He's, he's gone. So. He's gone. Yeah. Do we have any idea where he is? Because I know we're working on the, the, um, the new bubble thing where they can't, he can't move into the community, but he's busy grandfathered in because he was here before we're getting this in place again. Again, you guys waited until the last minute. I had to remind you guys in November or December that that date was coming up, and here we are, right up to the wire again. Not where we got the, the Corbin thing, can we get into court and get it done before that is done? I don't know if Ross Artisan can answer that or not. But that's just, we waited until the end. We're waiting for way too many things to happen, and accidents like this dog, uh, why, are we, why are we allowing it? Why are we allowing this, those kind of things to happen for certain people in town and not others? So, can I ask you something? Yep. I honestly don't know. What did this dog mean to happen? Um, I believe it was April 22nd. Okay. I didn't know it. We didn't either. We, this is just stumbling in the mind of Lisa's lap. We weren't out hunting for this information. So when we put it on Facebook and asked what was going on with it, we were hunting at it to slander anybody, to jump at anybody, to blame Northland, to blame anybody. We think everybody in this room including our police department, should, should hold some responsibility for that. Because we brought it to everyone's attention and nothing got done. And when I talked to Jennifer, the, the lady who's, she all, she all she could do was hold her tears back saying, thank God my son didn't go follow him and get in there too. And I talked to the grandma too, the paws of the dogs were just shredded from that dog trying to was a German Shepherd. It wasn't a little small dog like I got. You know, I, when, uh, my dog gets loose and gets run up on a car. I'll hold that responsibility, getting off the leash. But something like that should never happen. So I'm not real happy with any of it. And to have to listen to that family cry and be so upset for something that we brought to your guys' attention on May 7th of last year really is frustrating. So I hope we can get on things a little bit faster. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to announcements. The first announcement, the only announcement we have right now is volunteer opportunities at the local assisted living, senior living centers. This was brought up by Councilmember Morgan, asked about it, and then we talked about it in the office and it ended up in going into the water bill, in the newsletter in the water bill. We reached out to the different assisted livings, Golden Hearts, Highland Commons, Good Sam, and they are looking for, they're really looking for things to entertain people that are stuck in there right now that they can't go do anything. So put it in the water bill if you're, if you're willing to donate some hours. The contact information is there. You can call each of the different places and see if there's something you can do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Communications? A copy of the... MMPA Board of Directors, we had a meeting in April. There's the public copy was included in the packet. Ambulance update, if we just wanna keep going, that's a that copy that was, I'll just keep going, that was emailed out from Sarah Burton. A copy of that in the packet. A copy of the email from Lisa Passwogel was in the packet under communication. Is there going to be uh, updated figures as far as um, the runs the ambulance has made and the staffing? I do have some information on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else was the count I was looking at this morning? It said that it's 16 of the 32 that employees that had gone on and actually created a survey. 
was the survey results in there? I have a copy of the survey results, but just a heads up, those weren't approved by the city before being sent to city staff, and we don't know who filled them out. Was it Arlington residents filling it out? Was it Gaylord residents? We don't. Gaylord so it EMTs. It was EMTs, sorry. Mm -hmm. EMTs, not residents. Okay, any All questions right. on the communications? Very none, we'll move on to reports at a meeting parks committee, the 2019 annual reports. Mr. Erke. Good evening. So I thought I would just give you a brief update of the parks committee, what we've been doing, starting with the committee members. So when Alan Erke, I'm the chair. Bob Thomas is the vice chairperson. Karen Pickleman is our secretary. Other members, Gary Holmgren, Jerry Evers Miller, Mike Christensen, and our council member, Rick Hummer. How do you say it? Hummer. Uh -huh. okay. Sorry. Uh, so, the other things I thought I would go over, just a little recap of 2019. And then kind of where we're headed for 2020. If you think back a year ago, a very wet summer, spring, summer, fall. Mm -hmm. so that really plays into what you're trying to get done when you have outdoor spaces that you're working with. Um, but some of the things that we did accomplish, we are uh, continually reaping uh, Renewing, revamping, ordering new picnic tables for the parks. We're kind of on a four per year, trying to get rid of some of the older ones that ones to get damaged throughout the year. Um, we'd like to see that continue for a few more years at least, and we'll kind of see when it looks like we have everything in good shape. But we've tried to keep it to four. That seems to be a pretty reasonable number, I think. Reasonable, and we again we want to try to keep it down price wise. But, um, some of the other things were what you might consider maintenance issues mulch at Sportsman's Park and Friends' Park in the, the play structure area. <coughs> we put rubber mats under the swings in the park because it's notorious that swings get a big dugout area and in a wet year it fills up with water and you have a mud hole which kids probably like but maybe the parents don't so much so um, I think those maps work very very well I've taken my grandkids to the park so I like them and the kids do too um, how did sports this park we added a, an equipment shed by the ball field there, and that was the equipment shed that was built by students at the high school. And kind of a nice pairing between the city and the school. So those were some of the major things. There may be some that I missed, but those are the, the ones that you think. So looking ahead then to 2020. And this actually goes back a little bit into 2019. The Girl Scouts started a project at Four Seasons Park where they're redoing the what I would call the dugout area on both of the, the ball fields. And so it started in 2019. We hope it is able to get completed in 2020, weather permitting and everything else. But I think that's going to be a nice area for the kids a lot nicer than what they have. I think they have three of the four benches sponsored already, so they're oh. waiting on the last bench to be uh, uh, sponsored. And then it'll just be a matter of ordering them and then installing them. But I think the, uh, the concrete is so there, and the Kirby must have been planting mm -hmm. the grass. Yeah. Um, so that's what I want. Yeah. Okay. 
and I'm not sure if they're if that's all they had left or not, yep. if they were waiting until they could get together to work on things, being that they're supposed to stay apart. The pieces that they're doing now are pretty much individual. So they each, I think it was a pair of them for each of them. Uh, so, no, right? okay. so then now they're just doing individual things on each other. Okay. So but together. Yep. So um, another item at Frenzel Park, working on the, the ball field, need to redo the, the bases, get some red rock on that in the field, and really manage the weeds that are starting to come up through the red rock. So that, but that's continual maintenance. Sure. That's stuff that Kirby deals with all the time. At our last meeting, he made the comment that he knows it's there, he'll get to it. He's got some other things that he wants to try and right now. Um, we decided at our last meeting we're going to install fall poles at the ball field of Sports Wings Park. We're going to use some of the old power poles that the city was given, I guess. Mm -hmm. So there's really no cost. It's Ground. We're going to try it as a low cost option. If it doesn't work, we'll have to work with something else. But we're going to try this first. And then regular maintenance as Those are kind of our goals moving forward this year. So. Now, you did, did you do an inspection this spring or last fall? So, we did one last fall. And we hadn't really met since then, since up until our, our last meeting we had last week. So um, we did not have one this spring. Okay. Is all the, uh, as far as the playground equipment, uh, that's nothing, none of it's really real neat. How is it, what kind of shape? Is it holding up well? Is there any I idea think, that it's. I think it is, other okay. than if there's vandalism. Vandalism. Kirby Vandal. keeps up on that. Yeah. Uh, he knows okay. when something needs to be addressed. I know he had commented one time about a part that he needed to order and he said he couldn't, he could hardly get it anymore because of the equipment was that old. So, so probably there was a piece last year that was broken on the current slide. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, that's yeah, one yeah, of those. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was down for probably two months. And then you think he had to get a whole new slide? No. Or did he get a piece? No, maybe it was a little piece. I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Questions, questions for Mr. Irby. We appreciate your support and what you're trying to do in the parks looking at. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have a public works department report by Kirby Wickwood. He submitted one here. It was in your packet. Do you have any questions on Kirby's report? Just a reminder, if you have concerns about anything with Public Works, please ask me. I'm pleased to see that the number of street lights that they, uh, they've almost got a lot, mm -hmm. which is- That's impressive. Mm -hmm. I was imagining it would have taken longer time. Me too. Yeah. Yes, he did. Okay. Any questions on the uh, report that Kirby turned in? Not the report, but I did see an end paper uh, advertising for a work there. Is that right? The next thing on the agenda? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Update on the image. We'll do. That I will talk about. We've had three applications for that position. We'll be interviewing those three on Wednesday. Kirby and myself will interview. That's for Mike Williamson's job. He's retiring, remember? Yes, we approved that already at the council a while ago. And uh, we have we had three applicants. Kirby and I spoke about it last Friday and today. We'd like to keep the position open until filled. We had set a deadline to apply for that, but I would like to 
if we decide not to hire one of the three that we interview to leave it open until filled. Any questions on that? Okay, now we move on to ordinances and resolutions. We have a resolution accepting a donation from the Arlington Fire Relief Association. This was for a change order to the truck in the amount of $1,172.26, which they have given us a check for, but we have to pass a resolution to accept that. So this, what was the, the change? It was just a, an overpayment, so to speak? Or what? No, it was a change. There was actually a physical mm -hmm. change. There was an actual For, change. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll enter your resolution 22220, a resolution accepting a donation from the Ireland's Affairs Association and designating its use on the $456.02. It's $1,172.26. $1,172.26. Correct. Sorry. Okay, resolution 22 2020, which is by Councilmember Batcher, second by Councilmember Morgan, and that is a resolution accepting the donation from the Arms and Fire Relief Association and designating its use, the amount of $1,172.26. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. Roll call, Council Member Amla. Yes. Council Member Batcher? Yes. Council Member Gilman? Yes. Council Member Haddlestead? Yes. Council Member Morgan? Yes. Five votes in favor, none against. The resolution is adopted. Um, under unfinished business, I intend discussion on parking changes on County Road 34 for next year's project. I'd like to invite County Engineer Tim Becker to come forward. Tim, yeah, how are you? Good evening. Do you want me to fill in, Mayor? Yes. We, uh, the Mayor and I actually met with Rob Brow, Brown Motors, today. He had concerns, and I did let Tim know what his concerns were as well. He has concerns that there'll be less parking across the street. Across the street from Brown Motors by the dental office is what will change from, um, uh, from to parallel, from diagonal. what's it called, diagonal, diagonal parking to parallel parking. And he has concerns that the employees from the dental office are going to be parking across the street, taking up their parking spaces. And he was counting about three less parking stalls if it changes to parallel parking. Yep. That's what his concern is. And he asked if the city couldn't move ahead with asking for a variance to keep diagonal parking on that side of the street. Okay. If we, yeah, if you would move ahead to try to get a variance. <laughs> um, and I see Adam Cowell is on the line. Adam, can you hear me? Did you want to add anything? No, Adam. I'll, I'll listen for now. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Sibley County is looking at doing a mill overlay preservation project on County State Highway 34 from County Road 9 over to Trump Highway 5. Uh, we have one block in there where the street is slightly wider, and that's between 5th Avenue and 6th Street. That's right by Browns. Uh, the rest of the road is about 40 feet in width. The, the width between 5th Avenue and 6th Avenue is close to 58. The parking situation in that one block area right now is supposed to mix and match where parking right next to the dental place is parallel parking. Mm -hmm. Parking on the south side right next to the Browns Motor is diagonal parking. Parking on, I'd call it like the northwest portion of the street. That's diagonal again. In front of the, there's two residential. That's three homes. Three homes. Three homes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, State aid has recommendations for what the width of the street needs to be to have diagonal parking on both sides. 
the right guide, we believe that width is 68 feet. So we're about 10 feet short of what it really needs to be. Um, if you look across the road, Main Street to the east, um, that width is around 60 feet. And the city worked with the county back in 1980 to actually get a variance. Uh, the parking over there is pretty steep or pretty strong angle. People do have a little bit of trouble backing up and stuff, but because we have that existing variance, we can move forward with a mill and overlay plan and paint the diagonal that we have. I think we did a project over there about four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, with this side of the street, that variance starts at Trunk Highway 5 and goes to the east. This project is actually located to the west of that. And um, my opinion would be that we would change the parking to better accommodate the existing width over there with the parallel parking on the north side and diagonal on the south side. In my opinion, that would be a little bit less confusing to new people that visit Arlington. Um, so that's my request to the council, is that we would uh, have the council consider passing a parking resolution that would change right. the parking on the north side. And we plan to put those resolutions I wanted to put it on for discussion this evening. The resolutions are prepared, but we will put them on the May 18th council agenda. And now, if the council votes against that, mm -hmm. the we have a block. I could approach the state for a parking variance, like the east side. There is no guarantee that the state will accept the variance, and we'd be back at square one. Uh, the state would probably indicate that if you do move forward with the variance, that the city would take all liability that there's an accident, if somebody has an issue or something, because of this non standard parking style. Uh, the variance committee consists of state aid engineers from MnDOT, a couple of county engineers, and I have to get up there and feed our cases to why we can't rebuild the street to meet the current standards. That would be their first question to me, which we have to. Redo part of the sidewalk, redo some of the curb and gutter, and possibly some of the storm sewer system. Mm -hmm. um, that's what that would involve to actually go ahead and rebuild it according to the standards. Well, they would move part of the front yard. Right? And they move part of the front yard, and most of it. And I would almost, at, at that point in time, we would almost have to look at the parking lot area by the dentist's office because you want to build. The variance would have to go across the entire block. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be able to build one part of the block to one standard and the other part to the other standard. So that, that's kind of the variance route for rebuilding the street or passing the resolution to change the park. So you kind of have three options. Other questions about any of those? Oh, Tim, I have one question. Yep, go ahead. Um, so you're saying if you got a variance, you would have to ex make the road bigger? Um, no, the, if we would get a variance from the state, um, we could possibly leave it the way it is. But if, if I had to actually apply for the variance, I'd say we have a 10% chance of actually getting it. Right. And I think part of what Rob's frustration was is why this wasn't brought up to him, I guess, sooner and why there wasn't even a talk of a variance until, you know, now you have to have this done now. You know, that maybe if it wasn't an option, at least we would have known that. Well, Versus, like, variance is an option. I, I just don't recommend it because I, the variance does take about six months to get. So that's the first thing. Um, we could delay the project. That's not that big a deal. Um, I don't think we're going to be successful in the variance. Like I didn't get a lot of percent chance. Okay. And then the city is going to have to take, take on the liability or the risk of constructing a non standard parking area. Just to clarify, this, this issue is not uh, real sudden. I mean, we knew. If just within the last, or it is recent. We didn't have it uh, until what a month ago. As far as you're month. approaching the right, it, it's really construction. We're talking about construction for next year. Next year, not mm -hmm. this year. 
So I, I mean, if the council wants to wait a month to discuss it more, I'm okay with that. Um, Do you have questions? For, no. As long as we have him here, now is your chance. I I don't know. I, I from through it, looked at it to me. The change makes sense. I, I know it's probably not. It's going to be some folks that don't like it because they're impacted. Uh, but it's a narrow street. Uh, as far right now, we're being parked diagonally. You gotta get into the next lane. You know, most of the people. I think the big change came when the dental office changed hands and now instead of a local dentist walking to work in the morning and some of his employees, you get four or five people that are driving in there. And of course, mm -hmm. they need a place to park their truck. And, stuff. and uh, the parking lot itself by the dental office is pretty small. It's suitable for patients, but not for the employees also. So. And uh, Rob is right, uh, you probably will lose about two or three spots for, for parking when you do that switch. However, to the west, there is quite a bit of parking room on the North South Street. And uh, I looked at several aerial photos over the years, and most of the time, it, it's not filled up. Mm -hmm. Additional questions? All right. Well, thanks, Tim, for visiting with us. Mm -hmm. We will continue with continue progressing with. Would council like the resolutions on the 18th agenda? Resolutions on the 18th agenda. Is that okay? Laura, yep, resolutions. Well, Rose, yep, resolutions okay. With that. okay. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Okay, item number 11, approved the United City of Arlington uh, COVID-19 ERA utility service payment agreement. There was one change to this that <laughs> Council Member Gilman pointed out, and I believe Ross was updating this, correct, Attorney Arneson? Yes, and I emailed an updated version I had a meeting before this one, two meetings before this one, so I have not had a chance to look at my email. Uh, there was only just a very slight change. Uh, as Councilperson Gilman had suggested, uh, we were referring in this policy to the governor's edict, and uh, she had uh, uh, corrected what he's been calling it. Uh, uh, I had it under a different name. So um, that has been changed. Okay. Do you just want to get what does the agreement deal with? Do you want to refresh? Do you remember that we well, talked yeah, about I, this? I know. Same. We talked about this about a month ago. Mm -hmm. The state had asked us to. Uh, Consider waiving late fee man, late payment late fees for payments due to COVID nineteen if they can't make their payments, and allow them to make payment plans, which is what this is put together. One thing that council can decide on: what type of interest rate would you like to charge them if they set up a payment plan for COVID nineteen? So this is sixty days. So Two month window that they're able to delay the payment to get back on track, correct? And then they'll have one year to get caught up, a 12 month period to get caught up. And during that 12 month period, that is when the interest will be charged, correct? And right now, for people who set up payment plans, it's 10% of the current balance. Would we like it the same for COVID-19? Would you like a less amount? Is 10% too high? Yeah. 
I don't, I don't personally know what I, I mean, if we're, if we're gonna do something to allow, you know, or allow the hardship, right? Mm-hmm. So are you recommending 0% interest? I mean, if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I would like to sign up for this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's 60 days, it's not like it's, you know, we're talking like two months, and then they have a year to pay back that two months. Well, and, and Correct. on month number three, they still need to make payment for, for that month. So we're mm-hmm. only talking two months. I I I don't think we need to charge insurance now for two months. We can say zero percent. Yeah, I, I, that I, can I, be an option. If well, they have a hardship, we don't need to change. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of twelve months, though. Well, then it would go back to our regular 10% on yeah. the balance due. Mm-hmm. This is just specifically for COVID. This isn't changing our current one. Right. Laura, I heard you chime in. No, I was just going to agree with Joe that if this is something to help people get back on track, then um, 0% interest makes a lot of sense. Okay. Is that the only thing that needs to be decided? On? That's the only thing that needed to be decided on it was that interest rate anyone, and then approve it. Mm-hmm. Would anyone make, uh, make a motion then to approve it with that interest rate? I will make a motion to approve COVID-19 utility service payment agreement with 0% interest. Okay. Second. I'll second. Laura, okay. it's yours. Motion by Councilmember Halstead, second by Councilmember Gilman to approve the COVID-19 ERA utility services payment agreement with an interest rate of 0%. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 no. Motion carried. All right, moving into new business. Um, where did we put that parade? At the end. At the end? All right. Item 12. Approved deny sack and whack waiver for Miller Homes construction at 224 Frenzel Drive. Miller Homes is constructing a new home valued at 220000 at 224 Frenzel Drive, and they are asking for the whack and sack waiver. Yes. Yes. Uh, there's a motion to approve uh, Miller Homes uh, Wagon Sack uh, waiver. 4825. 4825. Second. Motion by Council Member Morgan, second by Council Member Hamilton. Do you approve the Wagon Sack waiver for the Miller Homes for construction of a resident? at uh, 224 Fensel Drive. Um, the only thing I have is, is there some, once the construction is done, do they have to bring in some type of proof as to what the value or do we check the tax statement? Or we can we check that by what it sells by. What it sells by, all right. So that is monitored somewhere. Mm-hmm. Do we know how many homes have been building in three start? Six, seven? I think it's closer to eight, seven or eight. Mm-hmm. It's working. It is working. I don't think it can go over under 220. Unless you're on the Okay, any other questions on that? Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Item 13, approve a denied $2,500 bid from American Environmental LLC to televise the Lynch Pond and County Road 34. Lee Ortloff, you want to come up for those two? Lee did do the work to reach out to the two companies to televise Lynch Pond and County Road 34 so that before they do the mill and overlay, we know what's under there. Lynch Pond, they did their work in there. 
conversations about we can't know exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I think that now is from the previous situation. We had this discussion a few months ago about television lens prawn when we approved that four thousand dollar bill. So they'll be televising the, the uh, inward pipe and the the outlet. The outlet. That's the one. Got it. That's the one we had the concern about. Yeah. So this twenty five hundred dollar quote is for the row where the it's for both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to know the condition of sewer pipe that's down underneath everybody. If there is something that pretty well needs to be done, we can work on this type of Correct. This was already approved. This was not approved. This, this was is, not approved. It's just a, the bid is here. Mm -hmm. Motion by Councilmember Batcher, second by Councilmember Alderman to approve the uh, bid of American Environmental LLC to televise a bridge pond in County Road 32 or 34 at a cost of $2,500. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thanks, Lee. Um, then, lastly, uh, in under item number thirteen, we're going to talk about uh, under uh, new business. We're going to talk about the parade, and you've heard the proposal that was given to us, and uh, we're looking for cooperative cooperation by the city and permission uh, for them to put on the graduation. Parade, so to speak, it might involve. It will, like, luckily involves, uh, likely involve police departments uh, at various intersections and such. I think it's great that the group is trying to do something for our seniors. Absolutely, yep. it's been so tough. And if we can, uh, they sound weird for it, but like, keeping that six foot distance between between everybody and the. You know, they're thinking about other people's safety. And I'll turn whatever we can do. Are you going to need any barricades to put up on these side streets or anything? Not that I'm against it, just wondering if street parking's going to have to set some up here. So I guess kind of refer to the piece of parking that was the Okay. And we do, do you know the date? If you don't know the date exactly. What oh, is the 31st? The date provided for the rain. Sure. And then what the city uses the platform. If they can go ahead, I mean, there's lots of gifts to them, but if they can go ahead with some kind of commencement thing outside, then if it rains on that Sunday, it will then move to 7 o'clock on Monday. If it rains on that Monday, it will move to 7 o'clock on Monday. Okay. So basically, just they're just trying to give you the weather is nice and sunny. That would be the that would be the optimal thing. If not, we would then move to the following. Mr. Berger, Mr. Hanson, um, we talked with them today, and they also said that once they get the direction from MDE, then they'll be able to release more information and actually try planning which path they're going. If it will only be virtual, or if there's something you know that they can hold out of the football field. So it we feel really bad that there's so many unknowns right now. But the date we are keeping with the original commencement date and then you know like they said but and then and it could begin on the 18th if we don't know more of the vaults. And that gives us time to to if we will put their decisions on the 18th the last week we can try to get something paper and see if we get a published uh, that week 
and then the following weeks so we can have two weeks of advertising mm -hmm. and what our plans are so we can so we can get make sure that the community is involved and understands we can try to do it. But, but none of that can happen obviously until kind of kind of reading on the school. We're working closely with, with the school as well and trying to sort of sort of things that we all kind of come together and and I know questions were raised also, um, you know, what about Green Isle, will they feel neglected, what about Baylor, you know, will that town feel neglected? Um, we did talk about the idea of having a great beach town, but we said, you know what, we prefer to have it just in Arlington, that's where the high school is, I mean, that, that's the primary location. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we kind of got feedback from from right, other parents who had a meeting about it, and the general consensus really was to keep it here and in Arlington, right? If, if we could, so that's mm -hmm. why we wanted to bring it up to you guys to see if you know we could get your blessing, and then we could, I you know, start asking like the sheriff's office, um, Gaylord Fire Department, Green Island, and all that, see if, if you know, those people would be interested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Right. Any other comments? Questions? <clears throat> a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the parade and help them with the police traffic control and helping them with the barricades, whatever they need. Yeah. <clears throat> Motion by Council Member Edelstead, second by Council Member Batcher to approve of the uh, parade for the 2020 graduates at Sydney East and give them any support we can from the city departments. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Item 14, approve the deny repairs to city payload, amount of $6,729 to Peaks Repair Arlington. There was a copy of the picture of what happened to the payloader. <laughs> Joe, Councilmember Morgan asked some questions today, which went back and forth with Kirby to find out what happened. He was turning over some compost when this broke off. We are kind of need to fix it. The city needs the payloader back up and working. So we have two quotes, one from Peeps, one from Titan. Yeah, so the price for, did we have a company like already ordered that? Yes, yes, it had already been ordered. We were gonna have Peeps, he was gonna have Peeps fix it. I said we have to have, and then it turned out to be more than what we originally thought. I said we have to have two quotes to fix this because it's a high dollar amount. We need to have two quotes to get this fixed. One question I have. Peeps, do they have experience repairing this type of damage like Titan machinery does? I understand that Peeps is who Kirby normally uses to repair things. My only concern is for the difference that we're going to get repaired correctly. I mean, if this is the first one he's ever worked on. Does anybody know enough? Yeah, I have a little concern with the chief of staff. I, I don't know his capability. Has anybody been familiar with their work? I'm not. I know. Is the payloader there? Or the payloader is there because that's where it was originally brought, correct? Brought to Peeps. Mm -hmm. So we would, I bet we'd have to pay additional following it to the cities, correct? To the cities. So Peeps picked it up. If he drove it. I think he drove it over there. Yeah. Yep. And the bid in Titan is that's not to pick it up, bring it back. No. Only the repair. Or that's the repair. Correct. I don't, I don't think we should. I don't think we're going to drive. They'd probably yeah, haul it down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just didn't know if that was a question. No. So the bid from Titan was, did I read that? And I don't have it in front of me right now, but I 
agreed that the part was ordered, that large part that had been placed. It was already ordered, correct. From Titan, or from? It had already been ordered through Peeps, oh, through because Peeps. Peeps was going to do it. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, got it. And so then it turned out to be a little more stuff. involved than we thought. So we're almost stuck going there. We own the part. Or the part's ours. Or the part's ours. ours. <laughs> yeah. Probably not the best way to do business. No. That is a huge casting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was, it, it's a clean brain. Yeah. Um, so I mean, if the pushing was more out, it's more you know, responsible. Isn't that what Kirby had suggested that was mentioned to him that other bushings were also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my concern. The Titan probably would know that for sure. And that might be why that is a little bit higher versus peeps. I don't know. I can only guess. It talks about bushings and uh, peeps. Peeps as well. Oh, uh, you're going to pay. If we wanted all of it, Peeps to tighten, you're going to lower the layer that's going to get the outer box. And then you, you get it over there, it's probably going to have to it back. I just want to make sure it's fixed correctly. Right it's my only concern. Not only me, but I think. Hey, Amy. Laura, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, the vol the um, audio is not terrific, so I'm going to ask. Um, I thought I heard you say that the job was a little more detailed than what you expected um, when the parts were ordered, correct? Correct. They originally just ordered the parts. They were going to, Peeps is going to replace it. The Kirby had estimated a few thousand dollars. They were going to fix it. And then it was brought in. And that's when we found out it was going to cost us more. Okay. So does that mean that additional parts may need to be ordered, which is going to increase this amount or are the parts that were ordered the only parts that are anticipated that will be needed? The rest of it should be on this quote, if I'm looking at it correctly. Yeah, my take on it. Yeah. The, the $2,682 was for the link and then, correct. And then there would have been labor associated with installing it. I'm guessing when he took it out, he noticed the bushing. Came in. Mm -hmm. Correct. I think it makes sense just to keep it at peeps and have them do it. The price is a little bit under and they are tore into it, plus the goods lower. So and it's a local business. I'd like them to make a motion to approve repairs to the same payload of $6,729 per year. Second. Motion by Council Member Batcher, second by Council Member Warden to approve the repair of the city payloader by Peach Repair at a cost of $6,729. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Item 15, discussion on the water treatment plan. plan. This was requested by Councilmember Batcher and invited Kurt Reeds to speak. Mr. Reeds. The acoustics in too bad. <laughs> You're good back there. Oh, I'm surprised. I'm surprised too. It's echoey. Yeah. It's a little echoey up yeah. here. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a little bit bad. Um, I was called by Councilman Batcher. She had a lot of questions about the discussion. So, for some of you don't know me, I've been a resident of Orleans for 62 years. I've had a part of this one street one on my 41st year of getting everything from uh, operations of water waste water facilities to the lowest grade up to the highest grade in other places I've been so far. Did a lot of industrial waste water troubleshooting. I've been through a lot of plant upgrades for many different engineers. In fact, with my company that I have, I actually did contracts. Sort of an engineering first, like some startup training with the inventory. My main job is to train inventory people. I've got a tough job. My job is to work myself out of a job. I work in the community and they need help. We figure out a pretty terrible amount of time, two years, three years, four years. And if I've done my job, I'm gone. Some people may say that's stupid, but to me, that's your work. It's mentoring and training and learning. Um, when 
Council Member Badger called me. She had a lot of questions about the, some of the discussion you guys had with the water treatment facility. And uh, I think one, one of the things that she heard or assumed it was said was that the water treatment facility has got excluded useful life. And that's not at all true. And I, I told somebody here to say that the water treatment facility is just like the cars. We uh, face things and we replace tires, we replace doors, and we replace brakes and so on. The water facility is the same. In fact, I know this last summer and some of the front the person pumps out of the place. And there's pipings that's replaced. The computer scale system has been upgraded, uh, I think, once, probably about 10, 12 years ago, uh, beyond when it was put in originally. Um, so, does the water facility need some work? Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, 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 piping is more I haven't been in there for quite a while. Piping is more than I can get mad. There's probably valves there, you can get valves there, it didn't stick. Uh, the filter itself, uh, a lot of times they'll take out the anthracite and the green sand is in the media base and inspect the underground system that holds that whole set of media in the filter and they'll check all that out. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. So, who, who does the inspection of that media? Normally, on a project of this size, it's going to be handled by the engineering firm. And what they'll probably do is they'll probably contract with the top or one of the other filtering companies. And uh, but generally, what they'll do is they'll let out the general contract. And the general contract will let out some specialty contracts. And the engineer will have it laid out. It's really not going to do an inspection. It's going to really be our hour. Place. They're going to come in the back trucks. They're going to suck yeah. the media out when they get down to the four grade. Then the engineer will have an inspector there, probably somebody from the top or one of the other companies, and they'll inspect it for the structural material. So I had a lot of the questions I think that you're kind of raising. So what I did for um, what I took away from it was that our, that our media is a you know, medium service thing. And then, then we also had a few other items you know, within the facility. So when I heard the, uh, or initially I think the way that I read it was that it seemed as though we needed to replace it and then it's like, you know, Yeah, it was really the, um, it's really the upholstery and the tires and everything. Yeah, like so, I, so that was my takeaway that when I left, when I left the tour, it was that we needed to do, um, some work to uh, the infrastructure within it, like physically. So media, uh, there's heaters that are that are old and, and, and need to be replaced. There's a couple of other right. items. Corrosive yeah. environment, chemical feed pumps, chemical feed tanks, yeah. slides, spells. Uh, you know, and then and when, when it comes to that point, the city is going to have to, um, of course, rely on people's service, which are going to have to have some some distinct ground rules laid out because. We can put in the top of the line SCADA system. We can put in the SCADA system upgrade for 2000. We can put in the top of the line SCADA system for over 50,000. Or that thing's got the brains and the monitors, doors, and we can put in automatic uh, either air operator valves or electric control valves, and the computer runs everything. Or you can put it in where the operator comes in there and they work the valves when it's time to backwash and then wash the backwash water. And then it's, Done, they go to the next cell. So it's whether you're fully automated or whether you, you keep it manual operation. And uh, these days, there's those kind of facilities put in fully automated, and there's facilities that are really not. Uh, right, yeah, I think the way that so my take leaving was that uh, uh, a few thousand dollars was going to get it, going to get uh, the engineering firm kind of going on, you know, what is. What is necessary. So, looking at the physical facility, uh, preparing it. Now, obviously, we would be able to have some input on, on what we would want to have in the physical facility. Yeah, and it, it depends upon what kind of level of funding you're applying for. Because, of course, there's PFA funding, public financing for which is real low interest funds, and then there's USDA rural development for it's low interest. Plus, you know, based on the income levels of the community, there's some grant. Either one of them, in order to, to qualify for them, you have to go over more than just a simple piece of building stuff. It's, it's, it's a full facilities plan. I've seen this full facilities plan or preliminary engineering plans go from anywhere from 40 grand up to 100 grand. 
So once you get your feet in, you get your feet in, your knees are all the way up to the thighs. And just a rehab of a facility like this size, I don't know if he's gone through any, but I bet they're talking minimum of a minimum of a quarter million, as much as a half a million just for a simple rehab, if not more. Well, I think the number that I heard was a million dollars. Yeah, and then they start talking about lime softening facility. And re re one of the reasons they want to put in a considering lime softening facility is because on the tail end, the patient in the wastewater facility going into the environment, you know, you see he's talking about salts and, and uh, chlorides and, and sodium. And typically that comes from water softeners. Uh, so one way to, to do it is trying to do it on the drinking water side, trying to get those the cannons up there. Um, I've been to two training seminars and talked to two operators, and that's uh, where most of us have water softeners are used to. Uh, instead of 33 grain of water hardness, we're used to one grain of water hardness. What? That's uh, in those, in the reverse osmosis so, or even a uh, line softening facility. So you can have water hardness that's still between five and eight uh, grains of hardness. So people are. Used to what we got now, they're going to want to keep those softens. Yeah, and I don't think the consensus was to do to the do line thing on the, at this time on the yeah. secondary side. I'm going to have to again. Yeah, that really adds up. There, there. Yes, yeah. Yeah. there was a lot of questions about that because you know those are big numbers. Those are big numbers. Not knowing whether or not it's actually going to happen, right? The NBCA doesn't have to make that move. No, and that's just it. The NBCA is. I've been dealing with the NBC for going on 40, 41 years, and they always come up with these, you know, whether it's ammonias or whether it's nitrates or whether it's nitrates or whether it's sodiums or chlorides, they come up with all these contaminant levels. They're going to hit it hard, and then they work into it because they give communities an opportunity to financially work into it and be able to afford it. And I'm sure you guys are all well aware of what, what the electric rates have done to our electric bills and what the storm surveys have done to our to our, our utility bills. And it's my wife and I, uh, ourselves in our home, we use about 2,500 to 3,000 gallons a month. I just got my bill in the mail here, and my sewer bill is $48, and my water is 24. Uh, if we start moving into a big livestock facility or our own facility, we can probably be looking at the same as we're paying on sewer, if not, then again, more on the water side. Person you've got Three to four hundred dollar utility bills. So, yeah. um, I guess, I guess all, all that I all that I ask, and I think when I talk to Michelle, is, is um, when when I was on the council, I always had a, a uh, thought, and that was, <laughs> and excuse me, was never trust a consultant. <laughs> um, and, and I'm being honest. That's that's the way I deal with my customers. Never never trust a consultant. Um, he does live in the community, he lives right outside the community, but most of them are all around the consultants do that. And what I mean by that is the council's job is to ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, there's no doubt question, and ask more questions until you're satisfied with the answers you've got. Um, you know, I can go into a community, I, I mean myself that I, um, so I don't go into the community and promise the borough and I don't charge the borough away. I mean, living there. And so and, uh, live your professional opinion. So we've got a 20 year old, 23 year old, is it 23 year old system yeah. in manufacturer saying point year or so media. Um, you know, I not that I had some questions as well. It's, you know, obviously the media is rated on water flow. Yeah. Were, exactly. we, were we maximizing the water flow? So all those went into my thought process, is, you know, trying to make a split. A pretty quick decision on an important topic. So yeah. when they design, they based on based on population. But so yeah. the first thing that's going to throw a facility out of out of its capabilities is the population. Well, Ireland's population is really pretty stagnant. We've up and down, and we keep it on the third. So the next thing that brings it into its I mean, its age is simple age. The media, yeah, right, as well. Exactly. So breaking down, yeah, right? yeah. So passing through, yeah. trying to figure out how much is passed through. Yeah. And, and and for for people services benefit, this isn't this isn't uh, uh, normal maintenance. You know, if, if uh, 
they would be coming to, to the city with five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar capital expenditures, pumps, valves, piping, and, and chemical feed systems, and then that doesn't even include the media change house. And certain things are considered reoccurring capital items, whether it's every three years, whether it's every five, or it's every eight or ten. But there are certain things that are considered capital items that pop up on these 15, 18, 20, 22 year timetables. And that's really where really the city is at right now. But the actual media. Yep, sure. So yep. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 What happens is, is uh, um, for a simple term, the media plugs up, starts following. And as it follows, the water goes through in different patterns and it gets buried and the water takes the easiest way and it doesn't, doesn't start building real good. Plus the uh, green sand, you can recharge it. You can uh, excite the molecules in the green sand. You can remagnetize it for a simple term by using your potassium with the magnet. Yeah, you know, yeah, you can that purple stuff. You can recharge, but you can only do that to a certain certain extent also. So when I, when I talked to uh, uh, Lee's, uh, Lee's boss, Greg Stanks, I know Greg was good, and him and I both agreed with what we just talked about, the valves, piping, potentially electronics, and, and computer upgrade on the SCADA system, and, and it's just how, how much you want to spend. This yeah, so when I come, when I walk away, that was, that's what, that's what I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, let's, let's, uh, Brand, see what it happens. Um, I, I, and something else, Kurt and I had talked about, we talked about getting money if we do move forward and need a feasibility study from an engineer on our water treatment plan, looking for grants to have that done. I talked to Bolton and Mink, they said 40, 50,000 to do that feasibility study. Uh, not only the USDA, but Compere does okay. feasibility studies. Okay. Yeah, they'll put grants for together to put it together to be the preliminary engineering plan. See because what we need to do. The preliminary engineering plan sounds like it's, it's preliminary, but the preliminary, preliminary engineering plans are almost so detailed that they're 60 to 75 percent of the way through the actual engineering drawings. Mm -hmm. That's why they get so costly. Mm -hmm. Say the Rural Development and some of these other companies say like, we'll put grants together. I think the Rural Development will go to $36,000. I don't know what the qualifications is. If that thirty-six thousand is based on a hundred thousand dollar request, or if that thirty-six thousand is just the going value, as long as they don't want to get additional. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not trying to speak for you. If you have some other questions that we talk about, well, we'll be asked a lot. We touched on pretty much everything we talked about. I guess it was just for me, you reciting it and letting everybody on the council know what, what's going on. And and I, I, I try to, I always tell people, you know, I've been learning a long time, I work with a lot of engineers, I stand up and I'll take on any engineering firm, but I do it from a dumb, stupid operator standpoint. And I've done it for 21 years, so I've got my fingers smashed, and I've got my toes hurt, so, I, so, so if I can do it from an operator standpoint, then I can. Articulated, you guys, so you can understand that. That's the most important. So, yeah, if you've got questions in the future, feel free to call. But if they're talking about rehabbing the filter at this point, I, I would totally, totally agree with it. If they start talking about going to reverse osmosis or buying software, like you said, six and a half million dollars. Well, that, I mean, that, that was their presenting. Yeah. So, that is their presenting. I'm sure the water board so I. The the live softening and the RO um, ball dropping. This is the fifth time I've heard this since the middle of last summer. Engineers have got this big blow up there, they throw this live softening ball and see how many sticks catch it. <laughs> so uh, you got you got to walk into it. You, you got to do what you can afford. Right. Now the state is saying we want it done and we want it done now, and they put it in a consent decree. That's that's a that's a tripping mechanism that you know you have to do. It. Well, they have to have a time period. Yep. Yep. Most for all. Now, you know, I've never I've never seen the MPCA the agency put in a, 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 a 
contaminant removal into a permit without allowing the cities a full permit cycle to accept it, absorb it, and analyze their financial condition and go into a into a um, feasibility study and engineering plan. But sometimes they're going five, eight, ten years. So. Okay. So, if you got any other questions? Any questions of Kurt? Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Very, very yeah. interesting. All right, uh, Lee, you want to come back up? Discussion on lift station at Sibley East. Well, three years ago, we were looking at having the future in the budget. Uh, we started putting money away to replace the panels, controls, and uh, school lift station. Um, there's a lot of sub panels that are mounted on the board, and uh, all those things start to be over there. And uh, at that time, we had an engineering cost, and what how much we need to put away in here to all the So as two years went by, we just went back to and we came back. Uh, we wanted to upgrade the pumps. There are currently 15 horse pumps in there. We did a study of a pipe size or whatever. Today we can upgrade that whole thing to 20 horse pumps in the end of the day. And it uh, haven't done that. We were testing for 77,000 pounds. So we just wanted to bring it up to have a discussion on it. It would help out well with the high and high issue here. Um, here's the 20 years pump. We have an additional one pump running 100 gallons of each of both pumps are 120 gallons. So if there's a water from the middle, it's going to be a little bit faster. You know? Were you able to tour all the pumps about this? Are you listening to the pumps or not? Mm-mm. That's what we bring in. Mm -hmm. So the flow actually is the name we go together. It was just Joe and I that, it was just the two of us that looked at it. And it might, and I, I recommend it because I think it, it goes a long way to, uh, mm -hmm. it was, what was it, like a Wednesday or something, around 3 o'clock, um, the flow uh, going through that sanitary line was, I guess in my opinion, I'm not an expert on the pipe science to be able to judge the flow, but it was quite a bit of flow. Um, which leads me to believe that uh, either we've got some water coming in, other than just uh, you know a few of our residents in that area flushing toilets mm -hmm. and uh, washing you know laundry. Um, obviously, snow has just melted. Um, maybe it's sump pumps. Maybe it's tile line. I think that was a few things that, that were discussed. But there's there's a lot of water in there. Um, when I when I look at that and try to get to a good cause of what's causing some of our flooding, you know, residents in our community are getting flooded basements now for um, some time. And that's kind of speaking as to like, you know, to get to the root cause and start focusing, you know, upwards, upstream, and figure out where this water is coming from. Um, bigger pumps, and, you know, it's not solving the root cause, but it certainly helps when the water comes, right? And you can pump more away. Here's the page on that with the, with the panels and stuff. Yeah. This is all, all new panel controls on it. Uh, new pumps. Oh, the boat is broken. New pumps on it's coming up. There's a new uh, uh, switch gear that you have to check with the generators. So. And money was supposed to have been put away for this, as Lee mentioned, but it has not been set aside. The money was not set aside for this lift station. It was talked about, but not set aside. So I think the council has some big decisions to make to talk strategic planning. What is really important to the city? What do you want to set money aside for? Is this important to the flooding in the basements? Is it something you wanted to address? Uh, talking to Lisa today, it looks like we have money set aside for the library. There's money set aside for the library and probably sidewalks, money that had been set aside for sidewalks. And that's all she could think of. So the money that was set aside for sidewalks, though, that money still would have to go to some sort of public health initiative, right? Because that money is coming from the hospital. And that's something, right, 
Right. That was a policy that was put together by a different council. That is something that this council could revisit that policy, what you'd like to use that hospital lease money on. Yeah, I think uh, one thing that could help is that uh, strategic planning. Mm -hmm. Priority ranking of, of items. So the, the three things that I talked about, you, you get them into the system and you rank them. Mm -hmm. So if your bank account's got this amount of dollars and you've got these things to do, uh, I can't imagine that, you know, flooding basements not being at the top of our list. Especially if your basement's flooded out. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I've talked to several of <laughs> that happen all the time. Um, and, and again, not that I, my, I, I don't feel that the pump is going to solve the problem, but it is, it is a solution to while we um, the other eye and I. Mm -hmm. And again, we just, if you go look at the water flowing through there, that's, that's quite a bit of water. It never slowed down. Um, a new payload is another thing that's been thrown out there for that capital improvement plan that never ended up budgeted for, though, either. That's $130,000. We need to prioritize. Like That's why that's on the agenda, that ranking system. We need to do that, and we need to talk about what are all our projects, and let's rank them. That's my water. And the sewer. So they can go. You only get so much. Well, you put the biggest pump in the world there, but you know, we're right underneath that bit. Mm -hmm. Put that bit in there. The drain only got, like I said, 35 minutes of horse water. They will handle it. And go. This is on for discussion. Council can start thinking about is this something. Is something you want to think about. They offered to give us, you can see on the bottom of the quote there, terms that we could pay part of it. We had budgeted $50,000 a year. And, and then at the end of the year, we would put this year's budget next year's budget have another additional $50,000. So we're at the $100,000, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. So then the talk was there's no interest on this thing, you know. And then at the beginning of the year we have to do fifty thousand dollars. I feel like I brought on them kind of the money's supposed to be set aside. I think we owe it to find out what the heck happened to the money. And and Guessing it went into a different part of the budget. Mm -hmm. it, okay. Mm -hmm. So you said that money was set aside. Was the council supposed to set aside money, or did you guys set aside money? The city was supposed to set aside that money. And it was supposed to carry over every right. year, and like the library. Years, so this isn't like a brand new topic that's come up. It's been on our and brought up over and over and over again. Another a line over. item and another over. And uh, you know, we talked about line item state mm -hmm. and it followed. And that has not happened. No, it has not. So uh, the library did. The library did. did. Yeah. And which mm -hmm. is just off. I mean if that the library did plug in anything else. So Right. And and like you said, I mean it is a crime to try and alleviate some of the water that's going into people's basements. That's mm -hmm. a high priority. Yeah, take a load, loader's a high priority as well too. However, that was kind of sprung on us and then on the CIT for very long before ooh, we need one a year in advance, right? So Planning hadn't been done prior to, mm -hmm. and 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 so that that's part of it, right? And this is kind of getting around talking about we in the bus station a little bit. 
but the full budget process has to and CIT needs to be helped too. Correct. There's so many other things. There's so many other things. And there's one there. I mean, that's the thing. It has been there. And and the assumption, well, it's not even assumption. I mean, we it was to be for these things, the money and the CIP. So it's your mark for So and that's where a lot of my frustration, I think, over the last year and a half, two years, has come from. I know how many times you've brought them up. It's all in that direction. So, yeah, getting back on track, making sure money's going where it needs to go, absolutely. Just so you know. Stand behind that. Probably a moment pass. There was the theory of the show agreement. Well, we have a big pot of money. It's there. Well, how do you budget the things that you think? You don't know what you said that when you said it. But like the show said, we need it to adapt because it's going to change. Well, I was under the impression that it did stay there. But then I was told well, last year that no, that money from the CIP just gets dumped back into the General fund if it's not used. Well, that's mm -hmm. not what I signed up for. That was not. That's what happened. But that's what but happened. That's what, and, and we just found this out. That's what mm -hmm. happened. So, can we introduce so a motion these... to uh, any capital money uh, set aside for projects uh, specifically allocated for those um, and not go to a general fund at the end of the year? I mean, if we make a commitment, to do something, we should do it. Well, it has to be that way. That, 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 no, that way. no, I mean, it has to be the way we put in the CIP. If we know in five years we need a, a squad car and it's $50,000 and we're saving $10,000 a year, we have to know after a year that we have 30000 in that particular spot. Yeah. But um, it has to be. I, I don't know how or so. why. No, I'm, I want to introduce the motion to make that a law. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was. I don't want to talk about this in two years from now. Mm -hmm. Of how you thought we set money aside for the fair. Well, you know, and what I mean, we owe it to someone. I mean, we have to do something. Yeah, it's. it's we're planning on doing something. Mm -hmm. If something else comes up, and that's where this project uh, ranking comes in, so valuable. Because when somebody comes in and sits down and says, I want money, we put it in there and we rank it. Yep. And if it doesn't beat out something else, we don't do it. Mm -hmm. That's economics. That's your own finances. That's the world, you know? Like, um, and, it, and it takes the emotion out of it. So somebody sits down and says, I need 150000 for this money. And we have to have it. And it's so important and everything else. It's hard to say no. You put it in there and you write it. And you're honest with it. And it makes it easy. I don't know. Yep. I, okay, I, I, know, I know there's a judgment in there, but um, I'm, I'm <laughs> I think we're on to item 17. <laughs> Lee, Lee, I think you're done. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Right. This is not. This is. They're not. They're not voting on this tonight. They. We'd have to have two quotes here. Is we're looking for direction from the council. Is that what you'd like to do? Move forward with this? Do you just want to put it on the? I think we need to move fast on a system that allows us to make um, good, sound decisions on what's important to the community. Mm -hmm. That's our capital improvement. The next, That's the next thing. The next item. Mm -hmm. the <laughs> they go together. Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, I guess for me, I guess, before we make a decision, I'd like to, you know, get our finances in order. Yeah. And see how this, this ranks with everything. Right. Lee, do you remember, did they give us a time frame on when we'd have to make a decision about this. 
shows, you know, that we can get is three to five weeks each time we want to build it. Okay. Okay. So is a consensus to just hold off on a decision on this at this point? Well, it doesn't necessarily need to be tabled because no. it was just discussion. It's not something table. I don't know that we'll be ready by the 18th, will we? Um, what would the second quote third? No, we can get a quote. Yeah, I was going to say to have two quotes went third. But if they're only good for 30 days, we're not to act on anything. We might just see this coming. That's my thought, I guess. Well, give you an idea. It might give us different numbers to work with. With the third, I, I think we need to <laughs> spirit up this thing, right? People's basics are boring. And the fear of that happening again, folks who can't necessarily are afraid to leave their home because um, if it rains, they you know it might damage their recently you know, remodeled. I'm not personally loving this, but I can feel for them. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I, I again, I don't think that this is the answer. Complete answer. No. I think it's a part of this is just a um, return train plan to upgrade the other station because there is some need on it. Yeah. It's more it's more of that than the cost of the improvement which is the full We were just wanting to do that because of the gate. Yeah. yeah. The way it's there sitting on a wood structure with an overhang on it, the wood is probably Oh the one's broken off as a ground bus. They're already propped up yeah. with water. So the sense, I've seen ones that fall over. Since we're on the topic, I mean, the the engine, is there something we can put in place right now that has people services going upstream and, and um, you know, checking flow and trying to come back to us with some information for the next council to say, okay, this is what we believe is going on. Or, um, I think we discussed that quite thoroughly last week, you know, what's going on at the fairgrounds. Well, that's only part of it. That's right? part of it. Right now, we're looking right. at this pipe, and we still got, you know, a good amount of water coming. So where's that water coming? So if those plugs are in. Some pumps are in. There could be cracks in the pipe. That's the mm -hmm. pipe. When you see the priority, next road project, that's the street that's going to get it. That is the other street going up to Chandler Avenue to the fairgrounds. The storm lines are way under. So it's sort of flooding on the surface. But this is a street that was in the mass door. I know. But we, we don't know if there are that down in the tailways. There could be offsets and joints, and then you could be getting stormwater from trench into the soil. There could be lots of things. Well, I'm just wondering could we have you crack and just take the lids off and do an observation on the water? All of a sudden, it stops right here. We know it's from this point to this point where we believe um, this is coming in, and now maybe there can be some, uh, what do you call it, guesstimates or, or what, on the vicinity of where the, the source is coming from. Mm -hmm. I think there was also a little bit Because it wasn't raining, right? The snow had just melted. So yeah. there's water in the ground. Um, maybe it's a sound, maybe it's something else, but that certainly, if it was a sound or it was a, something else tied into it, when it rains heavily, you know, all that water potentially would be coming in and then the pumps can't keep up. Okay, let's wrap okay. up item 16 with a decision here one way or the other. Go out for another quote. Uh, it doesn't hurt him to get another quote. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what it's going to hurt. It's not going to hurt to get another quote. We have a better well, idea. It's close to the, then we know, then we know we're hard. budgeting. Right now we don't know. The quote's going to hurt nothing. Yep. Anybody violently opposed to that? All right, let's, do, let's get that.
quote then, another quote, and it'll be brought up at uh, whenever that's in, I suppose, with the next meeting or meeting in June. Or meeting in June. First meeting mm -hmm. in June. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lee. Item 17, discussion on the capital improvement plan ranking system. I think we've touched on that. We did touch on that. There's also something Councilmember Morgan reached out to me, and we we did briefly talk about it. We texted a little bit about a ranking system, and I am asking Council if it would be okay for just Councilmember Morgan and I to talk about this rather than bringing it to a finance committee meeting. I think Councilmember Morgan has the experience with it, and he might be the best one to help put together the ranking system. If he is open to that. Sure. <laughs> that way we can keep moving forward on that. Okay. Well, and if there's concepts or ideas that you know other members have as far as uh, you know, a lot of things. My world is about production and safety, so there's the word, the verbiage we use to you know prioritize things are mm -hmm. safety. I think most important in this case, you know, flooding the basement is you know you have to call it something else. Um, immediate, you know, risk or hazard. And there is language in our policy already that was included in the packet, but it doesn't provide a true scoring system for ranking these. It's just if it's a mandated project, that was A, something that, that if they meet the following criteria, but we don't have a true ranking system. So are you, are you looking for yourself and also more to come up with a rating system, is that what you're asking? That's what we're asking not for this. Not to there, but come up with the system. Come up with the system rate. for ranking. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and then part of that would be how would we, would it, would it be, what I'm used to is, is a group together and we rank it as a group. I think a work session of the whole council well, would have to rank the items. Once, you know, once we have the system. That way, or is it everybody kind of does their own and then that averages out, and then, and then that's how you tell. Yeah, the piece that I wanted clarity on was are you coming up with a plan or are you doing it? Cool. So, well, okay, as it's right. presented, that's why I asked yeah. the question. So, you clarified that. So, I, I think I'm good on you guys working on that. Okay. I know. I think that's uh, what it is. Rick, how do you think? Rick. Yeah, I think it's maybe might as well use the experience that we have. Right. Well, and that's exactly what the next form is, is looking at the five year 2021 to 2026. Mm -hmm. uh, when we start, right. I'd like well, to ask. Just to pull back or whatever, typically the departments rank their own projects how they see fit, right? So when um, you would get your list mm -hmm. or other city administrators would get their list in the past, the, the city department heads would rank. Um, the list of their um, needs or, or needs or the order of um, so what, what they felt. And then and that's always going to be passed, right? So, but then you all started right. talking about projects, right? Like this project mm -hmm. that popped up, you know, street projects and stuff like that or whatever, too. I think as a group, as a council, we've always come together. Uh, we were going to do that Chandler Street project. That was the next on the slate because we need. They knew that it was bad, but then they forgot about Clinton, and that's been bad for 50 years. Yeah. So why put them on the back burner, even though we knew something was going on there, right? So we prioritize yeah. and try and get try to get with great projects like that. So it, it's working, but I, I do like your idea of coming up with like solid criteria is what I see getting from you, right? There's no criteria. I can see no. totally happening at all. All right. So, and I like that. You should pass a resolution with your capital improvement plan each year, too. Mm -hmm. I would even see it being the department's fair ranking is. Like, that should still come into um, into the main one. It needs to be ranked as a whole. And be voted yeah. against yeah. other things. So, if this department comes in, this is what they want, they get too free, 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 they get too
if, if <coughs> certain things like they need, like we they know that they're going to need a car every six years or every seven years. Why isn't that a line of it? Because you know you're going to have that shouldn't rain file against something that pops up because they need it. Goes to the CAD and it's done. Yeah, but in, in, you know, like I, I spoke before, we should have a CIP on that is for that department and stays for that department because you know you're always going to have capital outlay for certain things that they, that department needs, right? So to stand out, right? you know, police cars, you know, you're, you're required to have. Oh, okay, so, but that's on our CIP and not as a line yeah. item underneath their budget. As the CIP line, as their CIP line item should stay there. See what I'm saying? Yep. So there has to, it, it, it needs work. Our five year needs work. It's model work. The other thing that we do not have in place is a 20 year, and I would like to see a 20 year budget also be put into place. Things like the ones, the, the water treatment plan. If we would have, if we would have, after we built it, we would have had a 20 year lifespan. We could have been saving. That should go hand in hand with updating your comps plan. All these years, and That should be part of your comp plan. That's something Michael and I have talked about. Your comp plan, the city of Arlington's comp plan, has to be updated. Those are things that I would like to see is like twenty or a long range budget plan or whatever too, right? Something drops off, something else is going to come right back on. You can put things in there like street improvements or whatever. So I think the engineering study that Amy had brought up in the last session. Um, and, and some, streets. Mm -hmm. well, I don't remember if that was for streets or the streets. But you can you can encompass your your infrastructure. So uh, in my facility, I, I had one of the books. When I took the position, it was oh we've got to do this road, we've got to do this road. And I'm looking at the roads that everybody was telling me we needed to do. And we had we had one little hole that you could somebody could fall through. Um, so I had a company come in and, and they did a road assessment on it. And that was like five to seven years down the road. I had so many other stuff to go But as a city or a you know company, whatever it is, you can do that to all of your assets to to decide what state. Um, you know, what's the condition of everything? Uh, whether that's you know roads, whether that's uh, this facility, uh, ambulance, mm -hmm. uh, fire truck. So you, you get everything on there, and then you know, it kind of allows you to make those decisions. All right. Then, uh, see, Mr. Newsom and Councilmember Morgan will work on that. And bring it right back to the council, bring it to the finance committee first, or what, uh, what is your thought? Directly to the council? My I thought was. I don't think it has. Yeah, it's a, I would think it would be to the council to, to look at it and weigh in on because it's not finances, it's just a. It's just, it's a, just, a, just a ranking yeah. system. It's a procedure, right. correct? Okay. We can send that out. All right. Going on to miscellaneous business, are there any council member committee updates? That There's the two additions to it, yet, remember James oh, and Michael? I'm sorry. Where did, where did I put that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Go ahead. What? Well, there was the addition of, we had a personnel committee meeting before the council meeting this evening, and one of the recommendations from the personnel committee meeting was to hire Jane Ramaker. She has been the administrative assistant working through the temp agency and she has reached her 600 hours. So we would like to offer her position, a full-time position with the city, $17 an hour plus benefits. That's why we waited until we got to the 600 hours. We had visited this about a month ago at a mm -hmm. personnel committee meeting and she was at 350 hours and then it was $2,500. And once we got to 600 hours, that's when it gets the lowest at $250. But they did it for the office. And cost to the city is pretty much the same as continuing on with the. We need that body there. She needs to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. and she does a good job. She gets along with everybody. Everybody gets along with everybody. Yes. 
That would be step one of what it would have been for Laura Dykoff under that. Mm -hmm. Correct. To hire Jane. To hire Jane Romaker full time, seventeen dollars an hour plus benefits. Second. Motion by Councilmember Batcher, second by Councilmember Hamilton to hire uh, Jane Romaker for a full time staff position uh, with benefits at seventeen dollars an hour. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Okay, the next item, the last item is to change Michael's wages, to change the wage scale for him, to have his step one be $21 an hour. And then continuing on with the six steps, also change his job, job description to include doing building maintenance on the community center and take some of that away from the maintenance worker position and take that out of the community center budget so it's only Michael's time in the community center budget. And we will revisit this when his six month, when his six month review period is up and look at his job description and we will compare it to other planning and zoning positions. So with that, there's nothing going on here, right? Correct. Okay. So is it a true test to how much time he's going to be spending uh, on maintenance here? No. But we're just taking away Mike Williamson's pay from the community center during this time period to try to keep that budget a little more in line. So it'll help out the maintenance department. It'll help out the maintenance department as well. Half, right? Half, correct. Half well, for Mike, for which Mike? The maintenance. The Mike, ma Mike, the, the maintenance was maintenance. one third. So just review it again as far as $21. $21 an hour will be his step one. Beginning when? Beginning Monday. Yeah. Is everyone okay with it beginning next Monday? That's when I was going to have Jane start full time. Front of change this scale. Yes, his current pay scale, well, he was at 18, 59 an hour right now. So we're gonna change the wage scale for him. So his step one would now change to $21 an hour instead of 18, instead of 18 59. Yeah, the reality is Yes. I'll make a motion to everything he said. Twenty-one dollars an hour revisit six months, changing the. Uh, job description. Yeah, changing the job description and like, community center budget. Mm -hmm. And take effect Monday. Okay, well, I'm certainly not going to repeat that. So, Does everyone understand the motion by Councilmember Haddles. Is there a second? I'll second. Councilmember Gilman, any questions on that? No. Since January 27th. So does the probationary period then start over as well? Or? Technically, yes, it would. If we changed his job, yeah, his probationary would. period would start again. But you could also, counsel could say that his probationary period is still starts January 27th. Is that only because of the change? It's in, if we change his job description, that changes the probationary period. 
Well, we're revisiting in six months anyway. That's when we could revisit if you want to change his probationary period and have him start. When he's here working for the city, I want to Yeah, Change that, extend, basically you'd be extending it. Just leave it as his starting date. I'm fine with that. <laughs> we better vote before. We better vote before. We have to change my pride. You won't know what you voted. Any further questions? If not, I'll say aye. 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 All right. That's the extra stuff, right? Get into the committee member or council member committee updates. Is there anything that we have not talked about? We had a sanitary committee on April 27th. Um, don't have the notes on the elected officers, but as far as the condition of the cemetery, everything seems to be going quite well. Uh, there is discussion of planting a tree on the north gate or near the north gate. There's a wide gap uh, on the west side of that north gate. So the discussion is resolved to put a tree in that space to prevent any vehicles from being able to drive it along up the road. I did drive down there myself the other day. Everything looks to be all right. There was also discussion on like the north and east kind of border of it. It's made up of the brush and debris mm -hmm. um, in that area. The side that really kind of probably could be the east side. There's some plots that are right up against that east side border. And, uh, some of the stuff looks. Looks like we could get cleaned out on that end. Uh, the north side's a little bit separated from the street or the roadway. Um, other than that, there was some sanitary management software discussion as brought um, to the committee by Jane Robertson. And uh, she thoroughly vetted a lot of these programs. Um, nothing was decided though. Um, more to come at our next. Quarterly meeting, which I think is in July. July 27th. Mm -hmm. There's talks of that we can get together at the cemetery site to um, be on the ground for it. So, mm -hmm. um, also the parks committee meeting on the 27th. Uh, Alan covered most of that tonight. One piece that didn't cover, I think, was the conversation about budgeting and um, how the mower. Repair was it? A replacement? Replacement. Didn't get split. Was primarily coming out of the parks budget, despite the fact that it's used by other more by the cemetery, other committees like mm -hmm. the cemetery. Um, so perhaps something in the CIP slash budget slash ranking can try to sort out those allocations accordingly when it's a shared item that's in the square bucks committees and departments. Is there anything that you're going to do regarding the end of 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 it's coming out. It's about twenty-three thousand dollars. Okay. that rate hasn't gone up in the years that we've had it, so I'm assuming there's potential for change there. Okay. Anything else on the cemetery report? Works report? So okay. Anyone else? Employer relations will be back to Okay. Everything that we talked about. Everything we talked about. We came to this meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, there was some items that were brought up by residents. Um, 
those areas. Talk about a few of them. Um, I, I mean, there's some things that, uh, you know, personally, I think, uh, I'll just get it in, I guess. So. The, there was a temporary fence that was now hit. I don't know if that's still in place. Um, I know that it's, there were several items, like, you know, some of them I, I, I personally, my personal take is, you know, their, their business are trying to operate and, um, like, the new equipment, personally, I don't, I, I don't know what our mandates are, but I don't see that as a, as needing a permit to, to put a piece of equipment in if they're not, you know, modifying the structure of the facility or in any way. Um, but the, the tank is, you know, is potentially, you know, it is a risk. When I, when I first joined the council, John Pedersen had drove me around and that was something that kind of stood out to me. It was like, you know, there, there was a fence that was around there and it, uh, um, it was there to try to keep people out. And that was probably on the request of, the city, I'm guessing. Um, I know Matt's mentioned some thoughts of maybe using that for something else, and maybe that's still, you know, relevant. Um, but they're, you know, they're, you know, I don't know what our mandate is, but that is, that, that really is a potential risk there. And obviously, we did have a dog call to do it. And, um, children was the item that, you know, that, that hit me when I saw it. Yeah. Just, just driving through. Um, so, not sure what to, what to really do, and, and uh, you know how to really handle it. But uh, um, that is a, a pretty good risk. You can't wait for a child to drop. It's more of a liability on their part. Um, I think the, the residents have shared that. Uh, obviously, we know about it. And, and, um, I don't know, Matt, if you care Matt, do you have anything to order? Um, I can. I was going to leave this to the city administrator and the city attorney to talk about this, but uh, uh, we have gone over everything on that email multiple times in the meeting. Uh, the only thing I will address is the pit. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's a sad thing we found a dog. I was the one that. Uh, Brought the dog up to the vet and things like that, and talked with the with the owner. Um, it was a surprise to us to find the dog in there, uh, and, and it, it did. It was it's catastrophic. Um, losing a losing a pet. It, um, uh, on that, yeah, there was a snow fence around there. Um, no, uh, I wasn't happy with the snow fence. We did have plans on changing that. It does have a steel fence around it now. Uh, no access after removing the steel in order to get into there. It still does have the long term plans of uh, having a building over the top and being part of uh, the unloading process. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it's catastrophic that it happened. I feel for that family. Um, I told them that. Uh, but yeah, things you know, throughout the entire process here, uh, you know, since it's just yeah. They didn't make it talk about since I've been, um, and that was one of the things. What happened during the winter is it froze, so then you can't pump water out when it froze. It doesn't matter waiting for it to melt, and then getting a pump that was going to be able to pump up to 20 foot. As soon as I was able to get a pump, and I rented one, so it doesn't have to be there, and you get it done. And then, you know, it's, it is. It's too bad that it didn't happen before the dog was there, the dog wouldn't have drowned, and we did some of the pot. Any other comments from anyone? One way or the other? Anything? Hearing, hearing none, uh, motion to adjourn, please. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Councilman Mo Member Amrain, second by Councilman Havistan to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Meeting is adjourned at 8.35.